Well, hello everybody. Let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop today. Today's the day that uh, things are going to start happening. So, let's take our mouse right here in the center, swing it all the way up there to the magnifying glass, way up at the tip top there, and then type in the word Photoshop. Photoshop. You'll notice that Photoshop pops up. Go ahead and press Enter, or you can drag it down to your desktop there and keep it down there if you want. So here we go, we're gonna open it up. Open up Photoshop. Uh, so there's actually a couple of ways. We have our file here. This is the file that we're gonna be working on. We've got a couple of different ways to do that. One, if we just drag it in, it automatically opens. The other way to do it is uh, if you were to close that, I can do a right click open with Photoshop. Now send it looks the exact same way. So two different ways of opening up Photoshop and getting our pictures in there. Now real quick overview of Photoshop. It's just like sitting at a desk. Okay, When you come to your desk in a drawing class, traditional uh, art class, you're gonna have your your uh, canvas, your paper, your sketchbook sitting right in front of you and that's what this image is. It's your work area. Okay, off to the left hand side, up over on this side here, let me make this all big. All of these little dinky icons here, these are your tools. This is what we call the toolbox. And once you start clicking on them, up across the top is uh, it changes and it tells you what you can do with different tools. You see how it changes when I click on the different tools? Just like going to a regular toolbox, I'm going to grab a hammer and I can either put a nail in or take a nail out. So you've got different options across the top. Uh, at the very tip top, file, edit, image, there's a little bit more things and this is where you go to save your work here. Photoshop doesn't automatically save for you. You need to save it, otherwise you gotta start over. So options across the top, it's all good. Let's swing over here to the right hand side. Now, just like I said, we've got our our sketchbook, our, our uh, paper that we're working on right in front, and we've got our tools, our little uh, pencil box sitting off to the left. Over to the right is kind of an organizational thing. This is like where we keep the, the paints, the different colors of paint. Uh, we've got our, our layers panel. This is the different paper, the different pages that we're using. So once we start filling this up, you'll start seeing more and more and more options happening here in the layers panel. So that's kind of the big one for right now, as long as you have the layers open. And if you don't, that's all good. If we come all the way across to the very tip top to window and just push layers. See, I've got a little check mark. It tells me it's open. And that's it. Just click on layers and you're good. Okay. So we want to start actually creating something with this thing. And you'll notice that nothing happens when I click on it, current it's locked, it can't do anything. Okay, So what we need to do is we actually need to kind of make it our own. So we're going to use the what we call the selection tools with this. Over in our toolbox, our second tool down, the first one is the move tool. This is an important one to, uh, to know. It's also what I call the home base. Um, with the move tool selected, I, I can't really screw too much up. Okay, so it's my home base. It's where I'm going to go when I'm not using any of the other tools as well. So second tool down. This is what we call the marquee tool. Notice how it gives you a quick little example when it uh, when you hover over it there. A little quick little animation. So we're going to grab our marquee tool, and if you Notice that there's a little dinky triangle at the very corner. If you click and hold, it gives you options. So we're going to click and just grab our rectangular marquee. This is our first one. Now, I want the book. okay? And you'll notice that with the book, it's got a little black border around it. I don't want the black border. So I'm going to start in the corner of my book. I don't care if you start on the bottom or the top. And I'm just going to draw a box around it. All the way up. OK. 
Okay. Right about there. Okay. So now I have what we call marching ants. You'll notice that these little dots kind of flash a little bit. So that's the marching ants. Now we want to grab that. So what we need to do is we need to go all the way to the very top and go edit, copy, edit, paste. Okay. Let's take a peek over here in our layers panel. You'll notice that now we have two pages. We have our background and our layer one. Now, if I turn off this eyeball on the background layer, look at that. I've got a book hanging out there. Okay? So that's that's how we're going to start building up our, our, uh, our work that we have here. So let's go on to the next selection brush here. Let's actually skip this, uh, this third one here, and let's go to this uh, quick select, and if we click and hold, it has the magic wand. Okay, so we actually want to grab the magic wand, and what the magic wand does is it uh, it quickly grabs the same colors. Okay, so let's do this. I'm going to screw up first, and then I'm going to fix it. Okay, so I want this blue stuff right here, and notice if I click on it, well, it doesn't select it. I've got marching ants around the outside and around my book again. All right. Well, let me look over here at my layers panel and you'll notice that I'm on layers one. So let me turn off my background. I don't have a blue bubble on this layer. So that's why the magic wand isn't working. There is no blue bubble to try to get. So I need to uh, right click here and do a deselect, okay? Let me turn back on my background layer and let me click on it now. Notice how it changes to the light gray. It tells me that I'm on the background layer. So now with my magic wand selected, I click on the blue. <gasps> oh my goodness, it selects it right away, okay? Now, pro tip for you, if I press and hold shift, you see how my magic wand turns and a little plus sign happens there. If I press and hold shift and then click the little bubble, now I have two things selected. So let's do the same thing. Let's go up to edit, down here to copy, and then edit to paste. Now if we take another peek, notice how we have the same thing happening. We got the bubble on the same page. All right. So the background layer, click on the background layer. Now we're going to go in and we're going to, um, let's go back to our marquee tool, press and hold, and let's grab the elliptical marquee. Okay, that's going to make a circle for us. Now we want to try to get the globe here, and this one's going to be a little bit tricky, because if I start at the end, you'll notice it's not getting the full thing. All right, so in... Sometimes it's not even a, a good circle. So that's not going to work. Maybe if I start over here. Nope. Nope, that doesn't work either. Well, here's the secret. If you start in the center of your circle here, and you press and hold Option, all right, and now we drag out, and then we press and hold Shift, it keeps it a perfect circle and it starts from the center and now I'm gonna compensate you see how my uh, the bottom of my globe isn't quite there but neither is the top now I can actually come back you see how there's a little white above and I'm missing some down below here that's okay I'm gonna actually grab that circle and bring it in okay so now I have pretty much my full circle here I can I can try it again if I wanted to. I'm just going to unclick off of that. Press and hold Option and Shift. Start in the middle one more time. All right, a little off again. Just keep it going. Okay. And now, there we go. I can use my arrows on my keyboard to kind of nudge things around a little bit so it's not 
such a big piece. Perfect. Once again, we go up to edit and we can copy, but here's a shortcut for you. If you go to Command C, Command V on your keyboard there, now all of a sudden I've got that. Right? So we're making progress here. Okay. Let's go into our magnetic lasso. We're going to go down to the third one here, click and hold, and we want to go to the magnetic lasso. <clears throat> we want to try to get, uh, let's do the uh, the butterfly here. We're going to try to do the butterfly, but it's a little bit small, so we want to zoom in a little bit. If I do command plus, plus, maybe one more, plus, well, now the butterfly is gone, but it's nice and big. If I press spacebar, it turns into a hand. Once again, picture this like your, your sketchbook and you're working in front of you. If you're looking really close at it, if you have your face really close to your sketchbook, and all you're doing is just moving your sketchbook around, that's what we did here. All right, with the magnetic lasso, what this does is it uh, sucks itself two different colors, okay? So for example, if I just push on my, uh, I have my arrow, a little arrow on the top there, if I just click and then I drag, you see how it kind of drops a line right next to the black? It's sucking itself over to the black stuff there, so that's that's where we're going. right? And if you get a little bit wonky, well, and if you really get wonky, where things start going like this, don't freak out. Don't freak out. Just double click, and it goes back to dotted ants, right? And then we can start again. So it's easy to, to think you lost control, but it's easy to get that control back again. Okay, so we're just going to work our way around the butterfly. We don't have to click anything. We're just outlining it with our mouse, following along. We'll try to get the antenna up here as well. This might be a little bit of a tricky one because it's so small. That's okay. Right, just dropping it. Okay, when you come all the way back around, there's going to be a little circle that pops up next to your mouse. Do you see that little circle there? That tells me I've gone full circle. So when I click, now it's selected and I don't have it connected to my mouse anymore. Like I said, we want to have that safe home base. Okay, so if I go back up to my move tool, now I don't have to worry about anything. I need to get that butterfly so I can do command C. Oops, notice what it said there. You couldn't complete it because there's nothing selected. Right? Notice what layer I'm on, layer three. There is no butterfly on layer three. So I need to click on the background layer, command C, command V, boom. Okay, so now I have my butterfly. All right. I'm going to press Command-0 because that's going to take me all the way out. All right, let's go grab this lock real quick. Lock, let's start off with our magnetic lasso again. And I'm just going to real quick go around. All right. We got to go all the way around. Now you'll notice that this uh, the lock has this white part in the center here. We don't want that. So if I press Option on my keyboard, you know, notice how it turns into a little minus sign. Well now I can do the exact same thing. Press and hold Option and it gives me the the minus. Okay. So let me jump back over to my background layer, Command C, Command V. I've got my lock now. Only thing left is the pen. So make sure you're on the background layer and let's go grab the pen. Now, 
I want you to choose the tool that you think is going to work best for grabbing the pen. We've gone over the marquee, the elliptical marquee, the uh, magnetic lasso, the quick select, or the magic wand. Okay. I want you to grab the pen, and I'll see you back here. Go ahead and press pause, and see you soon. So I have my pen layer here. I have the bubbles, the globe, the butterfly, the lock. If I turn off my background layer, you can see the pieces that I have. If you grab your move tool and then you click on this little auto select, make sure that's checked. That way, when I click on something, it automatically pulls it over to it. Okay, if I don't, well, but I'm trying to cut the book, but it keeps grabbing the bubble there. So let's just pull that back up. So now we want to actually start creating something here. So let's grab our book. Let me make sure my auto selects on. Let's grab the book here and we want to turn its direction. So on, we can come up here, we can go to file transform or we can do command T and that'll give us our transform. Now you'll see that there's a little uh, little squares around here. Okay, All I'm going to do is come down just to the edge and you'll see that my mouse turns to from a mouse right here to a little turned arrow. I'm going to just flip it over ta-da like that. Okay, From here I'm going to grab in the center bring it into the kind of the middle of my my book here. I don't want to hide my world though. Okay, transforming is where things get a little bit weird because if you just grab a corner and start moving, it should keep its proportions. Uh, if it doesn't, all of a sudden it gets a little wonky like this. It's probably because you're holding shift and that's not good, right? So we want to be able to keep its proportions. Once you're happy with it and you want to move on to something else, you need to do enter, okay? And now I can move around again to different pieces. If I don't press enter, it's going to keep a lock on that thing that I was trying to transform. If I goofed it, let's say I didn't want to have this over here, but I want to keep it up there. If I do a command Z, notice how it takes it and moves it back to its position, right? Command Z is an undo Okay, so let's go ahead and grab our world. Let's put our world up here above. Okay, now let's take the lock. We're going to put the lock over to this side. And we're going to make it a little bit smaller. So do a Command T or Edit, Free Transform right there, right? And we're going to make it smaller. So grab a corner, make it smaller. I'm going to also tilt it. Okay, I'm going to press enter. Now, I kind of want this to be on top of the book. How do I get it to be on top of the book? Well, that's a good question. Once again, if you come over to your layers panel and you think about these as pages, different pages that you're working on, you'll notice that my book is on the very tip top. So if I bring my book all the way down, I just grab it, see how it changes to a fist, and move it on down to the bottom. Ta -da. These blue lines tell you where it's going to lay into, and we're just going to make it easy and put it on the bottom. All right, so we've got that. Let's take the butterfly here. Let's put it right on top of the book, but I want to change its direction, so I want to swing it on down. And maybe I want to make it a little bit bigger. So we're going to make it a little bit bigger. Put it right there. The pen. Let's take the pen, kind of do the same thing, swap it over, make it a little bit smaller, press enter, okay. And those bubbles, let's get rid of those. We don't need those things, so just press delete. There we go. All right, the globe. Let's look at the globe here. Let's have some fun with this guy. First off, before we do that, though, I'm going to push him to the side. And I want to get all of these 
other pieces in one big jump. So I'm going to draw a box just around them. I grabbed my globe too while I was at it. And I'm going to move them down. Okay. And now I have my globe. So let's take the globe here and let's make like two more. Let's make two more globes. How do we do that? There's a couple of ways. One, I can come down here. I can grab my globe. And if I come all the way down to this next to the trash can is this little page turn. If I hover, it says create new layer. So if I grab that, pop them on down, it gave me a copy. I can also do command C, command V, and it gives me another copy. So now I have three globes. All right. So let's keep that. Let's go ahead and make the back one here a little bit smaller. Command T. Make him a little bit smaller. Okay, let's make this middle one slightly smaller as well, like he's blasting out. Okay. Now, I think I want to make this center one on top of this back one. So you remember how we do that? We're going to grab our layer and pull them down. Not far enough. There we go. Okay, so now I've got my three globes here. All right, let's play one more time around these globes. Let's say I don't like this color. Here's a fun one for you. If you press Command-I, it inverts the color. Okay, Command-Invert. So now we have just created an image out of nothing. We had a bunch of random stuff here, and now we have a fully finished picture that kind of looks like something. Maybe I want to play with those globes a little bit more and take that back globe all the way behind the book even so it looks like it's coming out of the book. Alright, so we're done. Let's go ahead and do file and then do save. We're going to name this your name. Notice it says Photoshop. If you're going to be done working with Photoshop we can change that. If you're going to come back to it, we leave it as Photoshop. Okay? So right now, we can be done. So we're going to go over to JPEG. JPEG's nice. Press Save. All the way up. Press OK. And you're done. If you want to come back to it, work on it a little bit later, just make sure it says Photoshop right there. Go ahead and press Save. I'm going to cancel that put in my name, save, OK. And that's it. You have now finished your, uh, your page. Go ahead and turn that in, and good job. We'll see you next time.